Hi, I'm Steve Tuckey, lead faculty for Math 033 here at Jackson College. I'm going to be walking you through a couple of videos to help you understand and make sense of the Yummy Graphs project number two, which involves using Excel and gathering data on your own in order to complete the project. First, you should take some time to read the actual project itself. Uh, there's a lot of text, but there's only two pages. Um, I have the document here as a PDF on my screen, and so you can see the entire document as I scroll down. There are some links which are active if you have the electronic version, but the address for the link itself is simple enough that you can type it in if you want to. There are five steps to this entire project, with step five being the finishing and submitting step, which really just amounts to saving the workbook in Excel and emailing it to your instructor. The previous parts involve completing the Excel workbook and analyzing the data and answering questions. These videos will walk us through the first three steps uh, but leave most of the analysis and conclusion for you to complete on your own. Starting with step number one, counting the candy. You'll notice the instructions say to purchase two different size bags of the exact same kind of multicolored candy. It says that the candy must have uh, at least three colors. Now, I say candy only because, of course, candy is fun to eat, but if you'd prefer some other food or material, as long as it has two different sized prepackaged bags and at least three different colors or traits that you can separate, that's fine. I know some people don't like buying candy. I'm not a big candy eater myself, but if you want to do the project, you can always give away the candy to somebody who might enjoy it. So, for example, I say that you could buy uh, two bags of peanut M&Ms, one smaller and one larger. But you'll notice that at the end of this bullet, it says at least one of the packages needs to have a nutrition facts information label. Whatever kind of candy you, you choose, you'll need the wrappers and the candy from the two packages separated until you've counted, sorted, and recorded your data. So that means when you open your packages, I would recommend opening them on a clean sheet of paper just so that you can kind of keep the keep track of all the different pieces. Uh, make sure that you have counted them and eventually you're going to take a picture of them. You'll notice here that it says count and record the number of each color in each package separately. You're going to be typing this information into Excel in a little bit. But it's a good idea to have a hard copy of that handy. So a piece of scrap paper will do just fine. It also says don't discard the candy or the packaging material. Not yet. That means don't eat it until you've had a chance to record your data. The third, excuse me, the fourth bullet here um, has some information that's uh, important for us here. On a separate sheet of paper, write your name clearly and create a simple bar chart for each package by color using the actual candy pieces to show the relative amounts. For example, if you have six red candies and three yellow candies, the red bar on your chart should be twice as tall as the yellow bar. This should be relatively easy to do if you're using the actual physical pieces of candy and arranging them so that they appear as the bar in a bar chart. Make sure to have your name visible along with your candy and the wrappers for easy identification because the next step involves you taking a, a digital photograph of your candy bar charts. And so you're going to do this for each of your packages so that you have a record and your instructor will have a record. Plus, it gives you a chance to get a sense of what the bar charts are going to look like when you make them in Excel. A couple of points about uh, digital photographs. Remember that you don't need the highest resolution photo possible. If you're using your phone, consider changing the uh, settings on your phone, the camera on your phone, so that it's not taking the biggest, um, most complicated or the, the uh, highest resolution photograph. Uh, also, some instructors may prefer you to email the photos separately, so be sure to check with your instructor first. 
And if you don't have access to a digital camera, uh, the one on your mobile phone work, will work just fine. Then you can always bring your candy into class and have your instructor take a photo using the document camera in the classroom or maybe even their mobile device. Only after you've photographed and recorded your data can you enjoy eating it. We'll tune back in here in a moment with step two, which involves creating a frequency and relative frequency distribution, which involves Microsoft Excel.